Welcome here or welcome back. You're joining me for my second cup of coffee this morning and I'm so excited to start preparing to welcome spring. Signs of springtime have been popping up all around me for the past couple of weeks. Of course I had to start off any spring preparations with a good spring cleaning. So that is what you have just seen there and I hope that perhaps it has given you a little bit of gentle motivation to give your space a little bit of a refresh. I've also really been looking forward to reading books that I associate with the warmer months and so I'm going to do a little tea we are with you today. So first of all, I'm going to start with some poetry. For a while, I used to start my mornings with poetry. I really like nature writing in particular and poems about the natural world, but I just got out of the habit. Nevertheless, it's a habit that I'd really like to start again. And I've got three poetry books here. So I'm going to start with my absolute pride and joy, my favourite poet and poetry collection that I have, and that is Mary Oliver's Devotions. I adore Mary Oliver. I think the way that she writes and her poetry just is like a balm. I always feel better after reading her poetry. It just brings such a sense of understanding and calm, and I love this book. Another book that I've had for a couple of years now is The Lost Spells by Robert McFarlane and illustrated by Jackie Morris. This is a book that for some reason I associate with the spring and the summertime and I think it's because the illustrations inside, quite a lot of them, just make me think of that time of year. It is a book again all about the natural world and it has these beautiful poems that each have their own illustration. And it's just such a lovely concept of a book. And I'm also just gonna quickly show you because I love this. It has these beautiful embossed wings of moths on the cover. The dust jacket is of course also beautiful, but I love when publishers make the effort to make the actual hardcover lovely as well. And then finally for poetry, I picked this up for free. It was being got rid of and it's Thomas Hardy Everyman's Poetry, which just seems like a nice collection of Thomas Hardy's poems. I've not read a lot of Thomas Hardy, but I know that my granny really liked Thomas Hardy's books. And because I haven't really got into his novels just yet, I thought this might be a nice way to kind of connect with her. Her birthday was in the springtime too. And it's just quite a small collection and I'm just intrigued to, to see what he had to say. So those are my three poetry books. I'm gonna start now with fiction. So the first book that I actually had on my list to mention, I finished a day or two ago, and that's The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. I love Shalyn Chakraborty's writing. This is the second book in the Devabad trilogy. The first is City of Brass. I didn't love City of Brass, but I did love Kingdom of Copper. And so instead of this being on my TBR now for spring, I am going to add Empire of Gold, which is the third and final instalment. So I'm currently in the process of putting in my reservation request for that at the library. And if you are looking for a political fantasy series, 
with really intriguing dynamics of power and policy and very multifaceted characters, all of which are quite flawed and all of which you kind of want to root for in their own way, I would highly recommend this series. I have just started reading The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Halton. Complete change of pace, but I was craving something Regency-esque after finding out the new Bridgerton series is going to be released in a couple of months. And this has been on my TBR for a while. It's a very light-hearted kind of rom-com with a bit of a twist. So it's a Regency-style romance, but we we follow our main character who is basically a pirate but in a very well-to-do Victorian ladies society. I was pretty much drawn in by the fact that the little tagline at the bottom says Bridgerton meets Peaky Blinders. The Peaky Blinders aspect is not the gruesome gritty part at all. It seems like it's going to be a bit of a love story between our main character Cecilia Bassingweight and the assassin that is hired to kill her. It's a bit ridiculous but it's very fun and I'm really enjoying it so far especially after such a political high intensity book that I just read in The Kingdom of Copper. This spring I would also like to read The Garden of Lost and Found by Harriet Evans. I picked this up in a charity shop a few months ago now and yes I picked it up because the cover looks lovely. It seems like it's going to be a multiple POV historical fiction book about a painting called The Garden of Lost and Found and the people's kind of different relationships to this painting. I feel like there might be a mystery in it, there might be a uncovering of maybe who painted it. I really really enjoyed Jessie Burton's book The Muse um, which is also about this lost painting or this painting of a lost artist and I'm kind of feeling like this might be in the similar vein but I could be wrong so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. And then finally on my physical books that I have here is The Leviathan which is a little bit of a change of pace. This seems like it's going to be a bit more gothic and um, a little bit darker but it seems so intriguing that I have to add it onto my list. This is a historical fiction about a man called Thomas Treadwater excellent name, who is summoned home after someone accuses a woman in his household of being a witch. But the thing that distinguished this as being something a little bit different was the little bit at the end of the blurb, which says that the superstition in this is linked to something ancient from a shipwreck years before. So I am very intrigued and of the fact that it's quite small, the fact that it's quite a short book is also quite nice to add to my collection. I am also on the waiting list for my library to borrow Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Worlds by Heather Fawcett. I read the previous instalment of this series, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, last March and I wasn't blown away by it because I felt like the hype around it was a little bit too much for what the story actually was. However, there were elements that I did really enjoy and because I seem to have quite a few on my TBR that are going to be quite heavy books, I did find the previous instalment quite light-hearted and although it wasn't perfect, it was still engaging and now that I'm going into it with my expectations as they are from the previous book, I'm really hoping that this one is going to be just as fun and perhaps exceed expectations. Finally for fiction is The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. This seems to be a bit of a shift from her fantasy writing. It follows a combat nurse who is searching for her brother who is believed to be dead but there are these kind of weird eerie signs that he may still be alive. It seems like it's going to have a quite a haunting aspect to it but very beautiful and seems like it's also going to contain some speculative fiction which is really exciting because Catherine Arden's fantasy work in the Winter Night trilogy is some of my favourite writing of all time. So I would read pretty much anything by this author and I'm saying that because I really tend to avoid historical fiction written in World War One or World War Two. It's just not a time period that appeals to me. But I'm kind of hoping that it's going to reinvigorate a love for that 
potentially. We will see. And then I only have two non-fiction reads that I'm planning for the foreseeable future. I tend to read all of my non-fiction these days on audiobook. So I am currently reading Kate Moss's Warrior Queens and Quiet Revolutionaries, How Women Also Built the World. This is a non-chronological, but a kind of compendium of lots and lots of women who have inspired so many people and have been forgotten about throughout history. They're people who have influenced the shape of so many aspects of our lives and often kind of swept under the rug. No, I'm probably not going to remember all their names. I'm not going to remember everything that they did and who they were and where they were from. However, from what I've been listening to so far, I'm on a section all about female writers. It actually feels more empowering more than anything else to hear about all of these different women throughout history throughout all of their different trials and the things that they have had to kind of put up with. It's just really inspiring to know that you live in a world where these women existed and pe women like them continue to exist. So I'm really enjoying that so far. And then the other non-fiction that I have on my TBR for spring is Atomic Habits by James Clear, which of course so many of you will have heard of. But this is kind of all about making small changes to have a large impact on your life. It's the book that I believe coined the term habit stacking and so many other things. So many people have said that it's been completely life-changing in terms of productivity and in terms of mindset and things like that. So I'm just looking forward to seeing what insights I can gain from it as well. So I suppose that was a very long-winded way of saying that I have lots of lovely and exciting books that I am really looking forward to reading throughout the next couple of months. For now, I am going to finish my coffee and then I'm going to take a little trip out and about to enjoy some lovely fresh air. And then I would like to finish off this preparation for the springtime with a little bit of painting this afternoon. At the end of my videos, I really like to have a hand painted end screen and I've done seasonal ones for the autumn and the winter time. But obviously now we're in March. I'd really like to make a springtime one and that's going to be my focus for this afternoon. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you soon in another one.